My name is Fleming Branch, African actor, playwright, poet, filmmaker, enthusiast. Yeah, well, um, I give all the glory to God because um, my advent into the industry was uh, it was um, it was funny sort of started out uh, on um, stage right from Ife then you know uh, did a couple of productions uh, two movies we did one in Ife you know a token for love. Then later one major one in Lagos with a Lloyd Weaver, a woman of love, you know, before now doing several stage productions until it got to a time when stage now started to allow a relapse. And that's when I actually got the break into Nollywood as a tour today. Yeah. Uh, well, the challenges initially was um, those of us who read theatre or who studied theatre um, in a formal environment had a problem with the with Nollywood then because we felt that uh, they were misrepresenting the the art the art of movie making uh, and we said we were not going to have anything to do with Nollywood because we felt that um, quite a lot of people, a huge percentage of the people who were Nollywood practitioners then were not trained. So, but later we now decided that, look, if something needs change, if you, if you think, you're try, if you're trying to change something, you, you cannot change it from without, from outside, you have to come and change it from within. Or at least whatever you can contribute towards the change has to be done from inside. So we all changed our mind, you know, okay, fine, so let's go do it. I'm talking about um, you know, some of my colleagues I went to at that time, that's uh, NSTB, John and Jama, um, Jude Aura, you know, and the likes. You know, so we came in. Unfortunately, the first set of auditions, well, I think, I think it's, it's just one audition. Sorry, I don't know why I keep saying the first set of auditions. That was the only audition I ever attended in my life. And it left a bitter taste in my mouth because uh, it was clear to everybody that you know I was like most suited for the role. In fact, everybody was already congratulating me. I'm talking about the organizers of the audition themselves, even the director and all of that. And they were like, "Okay, don't worry, just come back uh, tomorrow or something, and you know, see they would have put up a cast list." So I felt it was a done deal, only for me to come back and now see some person his name there, and I was like, "This guy didn't even come for the audition." you know and i was really upset because i was like why put us through that process when you know you are not going to uh, use the talents that came for that uh, uh, exercise so i just decided that was going to be my last my first and last audition and i and that and that, and that has been the case since then so god has been real good because even the break that i had into nollywood it was not um it was not it was just god you know it was quite accidental as i put all god it was a God incident. Yes, it was a God incident. So that, that's, that's the story so far. Yeah, well, you can only try. You can only try because there's, there's, um, there's so much that uh, you can do as an individual. The best I feel that you can do, which I have been trying to do over the years, is by um, your own practice, your own work ethics, you know. Uh, I believe in, in, in uh, showing the examples, I believe in uh, 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 practicing what I preach, you know, so I would rather show you what I feel, show you how I think it ought to be done than just talking. The problem we have in this country and this industry is that we talk too much. We're always talking, 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 we all have good ideas, we're also very idealistic, but when it comes to execution, you know, that's where you now know who's really, you understand. So I believe um, in doing than in saying, you know. We've done a lot of talking and everything. Way back then, when we used to be in Nantap and everything back in the school, it's big, big going boom. And that's even the problem of most of the associations right now. Even Nantap, EGN, and everything. Just come and just speak big, big English. At the end of the day, nothing gets done. The problems are still there. So I try to, to um, do whatever I can in my work ethics, you know, 
in, in my per, in personal development, in my relationship with other artists, my colleagues, both uh, on set and off set. You know, uh, I try uh, with mentoring young people that I come across in whatever little way I can. You know, imparting the best in the industry uh, practices, which led to uh, uh, the Femi Brand Film Factory. You know, that's I've been on for a while now. It's about mentorship because I believe, I believe that's the best way we can do this. The older generation are like a lost cause. I'm sorry to say. So, but we still have um, hope in the younger ones that are coming up. So, by mentoring them, imparting uh, um, um, uh, certain values into them, I believe that there is hope for Nollywood. You know, so the change is gradual. It's painstaking. It's it's not something that is going to happen overnight. We've been at it for like I've been in this industry for um, uh, going to 26 years, and we've been at it for that long, you know. And I believe that 10 years coming, we're having a new crop of um, fantastic actors, fantastic thespians that are coming up right now, um, and quite a lot of them are very professional people. You know, they're very professional. They have very good work ethics, very good attitude, very positive vibes, and everything. And that's what we're talking about. They're disciplined. You know, that's the new generation, the new breed that we're talking about. We're not going to kill the old ones that are there, the people that will feel out the problems. We're not going to kill them. We're not going to even pray that they die, you know. But gradually, they're going to be, you know, if, if, if you don't aspire, you begin to expire. That's the way it is. And if they refuse to change, then by the time the change comes, it's going to sweep them away. Now the bar is being raised so high, even in production standards, in production quality, in story and execution. And right now, not just any job can go to the cinema. So, I mean, that's part of the change we're talking about, you know. This all started with people, you know, having a, a, a thought and, like, executing it, putting it in motion. Like, look, we cannot continue on relying on Alaba or relying on Idumata. Something has to happen. It's either we bend or we break. And we thank God for the advent of cinemas and everything. And right now, power has been taken from those people. That's, that's the way it is. So, the change is gradual, but it is definitely, it is definitely, definitely happening. Of course it's tribalism, I've always said that, I'm not, I'm not one to shy away from saying it as it is, of course it's tribalism, <laughs> you know, so the fact that you even have something that is called uh, Carnywood, which is the house of actors, then you have something that is called Nollywood, which is supposed to be all of Nigerian movie entertainment industry, but it's obviously just your booze now, I mean, pff, hello, you know. So then you have the Yoruba people, everybody's just on their lane and everything. That, of course, there's tribalism, and that's the problem that we have. And I tell people that, look, the moment we begin to see language as just a medium of communication, we'll, we'll go a long way in solving our problems in this industry. Because I don't care if you are Igbo, or if you are Efik, or if you are Ijo, or if you are whatever, Isoko, or Hausa, or whatever. Your language, language is just a medium of communication. An actor is an actor. I have acted roles where I have played Hausa, I have played Igbo, you know. In fact, sometimes when they cast me for such roles, they don't even really make so much of an effort to make you speak the language. I am the one that always insists that, look, it's only one production, which is 300, 360 minutes or so, it's actually an production, that they actually, you know, uh, Inspector Dagash, that's what I played, I was an Hausa man in that, in that um, series, you know. It was only in that production that they actually made effort to actually make me speak the language, you know? And I even went an extra mile. I, I co-opted every house a person on set and everything. I was like, okay, fine. I want to say this. How do I say it? I want to, okay, I will repeat it. I, they actually had them record like three pages of conversation for me, you know, which I went and I walked over. And at the end of the day, I would walk the streets of Abuja and I would have all these ideas walk up to me and they'll be speaking. House, uh, inspector, the guys, I'll be like, yo, uh. they talk around and say, yo, uh. they talk around and say, eh, they talk around and say, talk around and say Tor. so I got away with it like one or two times. It, it, ah. You know, the woman was just, she spoke to me and said, yo, uh. so obviously the yawa in that. They talk around and say, Tor. obviously you talk. By the time when she told me, I said, hmm. Mr. Branchy, you don't understand how sir? I'm like, well, I what have I done? <laughs> you know, but basically, I think what that simply meant was that I was able to um, effectively play that character to the point of conviction, you know, for a Hausa person to actually believe that I was Hausa. So language is just a medium. 
These things that are dividing us is supposed to be our strength. Our diversity is supposed to be our strength. And that's the same problem we're having in Nigeria right now. You know, what is, what is Nollywood? Really, what is Nollywood? It's just a sham. That's just the truth. Nollywood is a sham. My name is Ronnie Brown. Quote me. Nollywood is a sham. Then look at me, I don't say now. I will talk about today. That's the truth. Because we, we, it's, it's, we, we are supposed to be this one body of movement and everything, whereas there's so much division. You know, you, you will be shocked. We are more divided than Nigeria. AGN, Nigerian movie industry, is more divided than Nigeria. All this Boko Haram thing that you are seeing in Nigeria, all this Boko Haram, this IPOB, Masob, Avengers, and everything, we have more of those people in Nollywood than in Nigeria. Nollywood, we have our own Boko Haram, we have our own Masop, we have IPOP, we have Avengers, we have uh, OPC, we have, as in they are there, different factions. Recently, AGN, they went, they, we already have two factions, the AGN, the Binabo faction and the Maker AK faction. Then you now have some people now went and did their no good declaration. And before you now have, you now have another parallel government again, as in now we have three, as in what is that? You know, and it was a power play, some serious cool thing and all of that. So it's 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 rife there's no unity in nollywood and that's why you you would see someone like me that you know it, i haven't um, been in as many movies as i you probably would have expected me to be in because somebody somebody said it to my face at oj's in Suler that you know we, we went to shoot a movie directed by akula and jama and we, we just finished the movie, so we came to OJ's to just relax before going home. And we met, I won't mention names, you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't send, but let me just not, you know, they don't come with troublemaker too much. <laughs> you understand? You know? And we're just talking, and Akula was telling the man, if you see the work we just did for me was this, it was that, if I killed him and everything, why don't you guys use for me more and everything? And the guy looked and said, ah, you know, nah, even Femi and that, Femi is not one of us now. Nah. He's not one of us. And I'm like, ah, guy. Excuse you. It's bad enough you saying that, but now saying Femi understand. What do you mean? One of us. Who are you in the first place? Maybe I'm not one of you really, but maybe I need to know who you are. You know? And it's like, hey, you know, now nah, Femi is a Yoruba actor. And I'm like, what does that even mean? And the Bible says, suffer not fools. You understand? So when somebody makes such a statement, whoever he is, he, if he's listening, he knows himself. You know, he's one of, supposed to be one of these so called people that are. Anyway. And. It was like, Femi is your Yoruba actor. I'm like, what does that even mean? An actor is an actor. An actor can act in French, he can act in Spanish, he can act in whatever. It, that, those are just languages, you know? And I'm like, but I didn't want to engage them. And, you know, because if, if you're not ready to be going and chasing the, the marketers, then thank God the, the whole structure has failed now. Where did they find themselves? Then they used to worship marketers. You are my chairman, my this, my that, and all that. I'll be in locations when, when marketers will walk in and everybody will be running their task and they'll be like, who's the guy? And they'll, be, they'll think I'm forming, but I'm not, I don't know him. He should be the one running after me. Marketers should be the one running after me because I am the one putting food on their table. It is my talent that they are, they are feeding off. It shouldn't be the other way around. I will not come beg you for a role. I will not come and lobby you for a role. If you think I'm good enough for the character you want to portray, then you call me. That's the way it's supposed to be. You call me, okay, guy, come on, well, let's have a read or let's have a whatever, no problem. But I will not be chasing you all over the place and looking at you when I know you are using my head. Using my head. You go to a place like LTV8, way back then anyway, I don't know how it is now. You see cars parked, you look at the, car, uh, the, the parking lot. When you see cars like, you know, uh, Range Rover, you know, like all these evoke them and all that. When you see Infinity and all that, it belongs to the marketers. When you see Baby Boy, Tassel, Nissan, something, something, all those motor when again, they will be like mat, uh, Matchbox. It belongs to the star actors. Isn't there a problem in that picture? As in, isn't the reverse supposed to be the case? You know, you hear of marketers having ma massive hotels, having housing estates where star actors are still struggling to pay their rent. There's something wrong with that picture. You know, so th th those are the problems that are that that we have in Nollywood, which some of us are really working assiduously to change, and it's going to happen right now because until you have people who are not afraid to come out and say the truth, you will not have change. And I think we've just gotten to that point right now where we just have to call a spade a spade. Things are going to change. If AGN 
has become, which is, which is the truth, ADN has become a failed association, that's the truth, then let's bloody wrap it up and let's have something that will change and affect the life of practitioners. Do you understand? So there's division in, you cannot even imagine, division is a nice word for it. But just remember I said that we have Boko Haram, we have iPod, we have Masob, everything inside Nollywood. Uh, you see, that's one of the problems that we're talking about. What is old Nollywood? What is new Nollywood? Have you ever heard anybody say old Hollywood and new Hollywood or old Bollywood and new Bollywood? You see, this, this, is, this is the problem. When you have people, um, and we permit it, it's just like in our nation. You have people take electoral, uh, electoral offices and everything, and they end up messing up there and everything. We can't blame them, we put them there. By the time you have an, an, an illiterate, you put an illiterate in a, in a position of power just because of the money he gave you to elect him. Then you shouldn't complain when he starts behaving like a fool because you put him there, you empowered him. You know? So that's the same problem that we're having in our industry. You understand? When we, when we, when we allow fools and ignorant people to take over the helm of affairs, the, the, things are bound to, 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 to be topsy-turvy. You know? So what, what, what is the meaning of old Nollywood or new Nollywood? What does that even mean? I, I wouldn't even want to... It's, it's, it's illiteracy. I'm sorry. That's, that's, just, that's just what it is. No, for real. Honestly, it's just like when, when they, they, they were celebrating Nollywood at something the other time and they, 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 they chose a, a convenient date for themselves as when they feel Nollywood started. Who does that? That is perversion of history. Where did you put the Ogundes, the Onyade Jobis? You know, where did you put them? The people who started this business. Were they, is that, was that a different industry? Because if Nollywood means the Nigerian movie industry, then isn't that where it started from? And some of our people who are in a position to actually talk, who are in a position to question this thing, were just looking like fools. They were just, some of them were, I think some of them even went there and they were, I mean, it's, it's just sad, really, you know? When you just have a bunch of people there who feel that, okay, fine, they can just rewrite everything and just like, you know, pervert, whatever. Then we shouldn't complain because we're the ones that permitted them to be there. But all that is changing very soon. I won't say more than that. Have you ever thought of quitting the Nollywood Why would I quit? I don't have any other... You have a job for me. If you have a job for me, oh, that will be paying me more and all that, that kind of thing. No problem. You see, the thing is, you think you need to... When I hear this question, when, you know, have you ever thought of quitting and everything? Yeah. In every um, endeavor in life, you know, it comes with its, with its challenges, yeah? You get to a point where you are, maybe things are not just working right. You only think, you only think like that when things are not working right. Maybe when jobs are not coming as they're supposed to come in and stuff like that. But then again, you need to understand that there will always be the highs and the lows in any, any venture you are in in life. You know, there will always be the, you know, the upbeat moments and the, 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 the down low moments. So, um, but I have never at any point in time got into that stage where I now say, man, maybe I should just quit, maybe I should just fashion this and go and look for something else to do, you know. It, it has never been that bad and it will never be, bad, be that bad in Jesus' name. And not just because, because passion is what drives me, that's what got me into this uh, line of work. It is passion driven, 100%. So, and I don't see that passion going anywhere anytime soon. That's it. It was a conscious decision to go and start doing Yoruba films because of what I told you about that I, you know, I saw this, all this ethnic, ethnicism, you know, and all of that. Um, it was annoying, you know, and I felt that, okay, fine. They're making it look like if you're a Yoruba actor, you are sub, substandard. You are not, you know, you are not so good. And I wanted to show them that, look, an actor is an actor. Language is just a medium, you know. So I will take my craft to that that Yoruba that people are yabbing. That is there. Not, I will, I will, I will take it there, and I will show you people that it's not about the language or anything like that. And I thank God that I was able to do that successful, successfully for you know for a good number of years, you know. Um, but like I said, we, we we have problems in every strata of the industry. And um, one of the major problems that the Yoruba movie industry has is that they are their own worst enemies. You know, there's too much, uh, it's everywhere anyway. There's backbiting everywhere. There's, um, 
there's bug biting everywhere, you know, there's uh, envy and uh, there's strife, you know, and just the same thing with the Yoruba movie industry as well. Uh, it, it, it got to a point where I just felt, okay, fine, I had done my bit here, you know, and that was it. But um, it's, it's been very challenging. My deciding to go whole, whole, wholesale into the Yoruba movie industry has cost me my um, identity uh, in the English-speaking actors community in Nigeria. Let me put it like that. You know, because they don't feel that, oh, he's a Yoruba actor. Just like I said, that clown said the other time, that, oh, he's a Yoruba actor. You know, so because he's a Yoruba actor, he cannot speak English. This clown cannot even speak on tenth of the English that I that I've not even spoken. And he's telling me, oh, you know, he's a Yoruba actor. So he cannot uh, do English with him. And I looked at him. <laughs> I'm so tempted to mention his name right now because that thing, no, that thing really pissed me off. No, seriously. So it's it's been really challenging, you know, because they just say, okay, he's a Yoruba actor and everything, then they won't call him for English films and all of that. So only people who know what they are doing and who know him or who know me and everything would actually call me for English jobs and everything. So it's not been easy. It's been very challenging, uh, but I thank God that in all, you know, one has still uh, managed by his grace to remain relevant and a force to reckon with. I thank God for that. Uh, it's, very, it's, it's very easy, really. It's just keeping it fresh. It's just about keeping it fresh. I try not to fall into the, um, the common folly of the average uh, Nigerian actor, which is to get to a point where you feel that, okay, you have arrived and everything is okay and every other job is just another job and all that, you know. Like I said earlier, that when you cease to aspire, you begin to expire. When you feel that you've reached a certain level and you don't need to impress anybody, then that's it, fine. It's not about impressing people really, but it's about impressing yourself, you know. Uh, and I say severally, I've said this on many occasions, that one person that I really find to, who has inspired me, was, um, is Joker Silva, you know, because of her work ethics. You know, I, the few times I've been uh, privileged to either work with her or see her on set, she comes on set as if it's her first time of doing that thing, you know, as if she's just a green that has just been given an opportunity. And another person that imparted that uh, in, in me was uh, Professor Olarutimi, who mentored me at, way back at the Obafemi Aolo University. And he, he made me to understand that um, it's, it's, not the, it's not the roles that make the actor, it's the actor that makes the role. So it's not about the size of the role, you understand? It's about the size of the actor, really, literally put, you know? And he gave an example of a production he did where he did not have one line from beginning to end, but at the end of the day, he got the loudest ovation, you know? And those, those are things that keep ringing in my head anytime I go. So it helps me to keep it fresh, you know? I go to any set, either big production, small production, although there are no such things. We only speak budget-wise, you know? At the end of the day, when the audience is sitting watching the movie, they don't care whether you're paid 1 million naira, whether you're paid 50,000 naira. You know, they don't care whether you slept in four points by Sheraton or you slept at Onubangu uh, Hotel in whatever. You understand? It's the end product that they're concerned with. So I, I always remind myself of that, that look, it's the end product that the audience is going to, you know, reckon with. So, and I, I put the, the same energy that I would put into a job where I was paid probably like two million, is the same energy I would put into a job where I was paid much less because at the end of the day nobody cares how much they paid you so that's that's it well it's taking quite a lot really um the privacy for one you have no privacy and th that thing is so annoying um people just feel that they have a right into your life they have a right to your life they have a right into your space you do not have a right to privacy, you know. If it's possible, even when you're doing your wife, they want to be there to see how you do it and write a critique on it. You know, it's really crazy. You know, some people feel so, you understand, um, boxed in that, you know, they can't really be themselves. Yeah, and, it's, and I tell people that, look, it's the same people that will still criticize you when you try to live this fake life. So why don't you just be yourself? They will grab you only once. 
Yeah, can you imagine? It's, it's actually taking Okada. Okay? It's just one day. Once they don't get okay, they don't know he's an Okada riding actor. Abi, uh, no problem. Your life continues. By the time you move on and get house in Banana Island, uh, they, you understand? But by the time you are pretending to be living in Banana Island, whereas you are living at, uh, let me not mention anywhere so, uh, so that people who live in there won't be offended. You understand? <laughs> you know, and they find out. You end up looking like a fool. I know actors who actually buy things on credit just to look good and to look like a star you know they want they'll have an event that and they will collect cloth on credit collect jewelry on credit just to be at that red carpet and to just you know for glam sake and you have not even left that event and the person that you will say oh, well, where my money oh you promise you understand? so you are not at peace you're not happy people have an impression that oh this person is all that but you know deep down that you're not and you're just making yourself miserable, you know. So I don't believe in that, you know. I believe in this is who I am, you know. So I try as much as possible not to be hampered by that aspect, you know. I do not live a life above my means. This is who I am, you know. If you see me at uh, Balogun buying jeans or buying whatever, if you are not happy about it or you're upset, pull my trouser eh, and carry me to Kiwanku, which is one of the most expensive shops in Lagos. So carry me there. Tell me that what do you mean? How can you be buying jeans of, of 5,000 naira? Come on, follow me. Okay, let me get, get into my car. Let me go and buy you jeans of 75,000 naira. Say, ah, okay, let us go. No problem. But for you to not be criticizing that, why is it when can you, I saw him? Turn that fire your mouth. Did you? Did I collect that money from your hand to go and buy the jeans? So I don't send anybody. So it's taking privacy for those who want their privacy to be taken. Yeah. Then it's it's made people to live false life for those who want to live false lives. Uh, yeah, I have reasons to be grateful. Um, when I stand and say that I do not have any godfather in this industry, I do not have any boss in this industry. You know, meaning somebody that you know brought me. You know, I came in through. It was just God. The opportunities were all divinely orchestrated. So that's enough reason for me to give thanks to God. So definitely that and so much more that God has blessed me with. You know, so you have to learn to take the good with the bad. The Bible says that in all things you give thanks. So learn to thank God when it's rosy and when it's not so good. So that's, that's, that's it. Why would I quit? I don't have any other, you have a job for me. If you have a job for me, oh, that will be paying me more and all that, that kind of thing, no problem. You see, the thing is, you think you need to, uh, when I hear this question, well, you know, have you ever thought of quitting and everything? Yeah, in every um, endeavor in life, you know, it comes with its, with its challenges, yeah? You get to a point where you are, maybe things are not just working right. You only think, you only think like that when things are not working right. Maybe when jobs are not coming as they're supposed to come in and stuff like that. But then again, you need to understand that there will always be the highs and the lows in any venture you are in in life. You know, there will always be the, you know, the upbeat moments and the, 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 the down low moments. So, um, but I have never at any point in time got into that stage where I now say, man, maybe I should just quit. Maybe I should just fancy this and go and look for something else to do. You know? it, it has never been that bad and it will never be, ba be that bad in Jesus' name. And not just because, because passion is what drives me. That's what got me into this uh, line of work. It is passion driven, 100%. So, and I don't see that passion going anywhere anytime soon. That's it. Hey, and I thought Dari was the only one that was underrated. So, I'm also underrated. That's a compliment to this country. When they say you're underrated. <laughs> Well, it's simple. the reason is simple now. It's it's what I, well, I I don't know. I'm not saying I, I agree with that notion anyway. But if at all that is the case, then the the reason is not far fetched. Just like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, when some people believe that because you act mostly Hausa movies, then you cannot act in an English speaking movie. You know, so that's that's probably one of the reasons why uh, that might be the case, if it is the case. You know, so um, but pff, it's no big deal. You know, it even helps you. At least you end up when people know that whatever job they see you in are good jobs and top-notch jobs. I think that speaks well for you. You know, so if that's the case, well, I thank the Lord. I know some people that are not underrated, but are not even where I am. So I thank God. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, see, um, one thing I need to point out is that uh, marriages fail everywhere. Uh, to understand why marriage would fail, we first need to understand how the marriage came to be in the first place. The marriage is a union of two people who decided, decided consciously to spend the rest of their lives together. Okay? I know you guys might do some interesting things with this point, so that's why I'm trying to like... <laughs> No, but, but, but really, but really, marriage is a union of two people who, whether they call it love or convenience or whatever, decided to spend the rest of their lives together with each other. Decided being the key word there. And as long as they hold on to this decision, because it's a two-way thing, marriage is a two-way street, you must be on the same page at every point in, in that journey. You know, as long as they decide to they still hold on to that decision then it keeps working and it might probably work to the end of their lives but the point at which one or both parties decides that this thing is not really working out for me as i expected or my expectations for this whole thing is not really being met then that party deserves or reserves the right to work out because you can't force anybody to be in a, any kind of relationship. That's just the truth. If the, the person feels that, look, he or she is tired and can't cope again, then let the person go. You can't hold that person down. Because if the family talk to the person or the friends talk and the person still stays, it might be worse. Because now the person might be doing some other things that you find and it will now have a, 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 a worse ending than it's going to have. So, it's a very simple thing. Breakups happen everywhere. Relationships fail everywhere. Marriages fail everywhere. It's not peculiar to Nollywood. It's not, a, it's not peculiar to the entertainment industry. So, but yeah, because we're in the spotlight, so everything that happens to us seems to be like 10 times larger than life or larger than usual. But that's just the way, that's just a simple analysis. You know, it's no biggie. If you don't love somebody enough or care for somebody enough, in, you know, to stay with the person in spite of whatever, then walk. Walk. Yeah, see that that's the thing. We 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 are the we are the we are the root of our own problems. We lay the foundation for our own problems by exhibiting our lives on the pages of social media apps and we now want people to only remember or celebrate the good or the positive things we post about ourselves when the negative things start to happen we do not want them to talk about it we do not want them to remember it we do not want them to make reference to it come on like seriously <laughs> you know so by the time you like come out ah getting on this and this and this and you know 50 million dollar deal loading or can you come you know brand new car from bay or from boo and everything can you this and, and you that exhibited the range rover evoke today has been you know bad day gig from boo and tomorrow they see you ordering uber or taxi fi they will definitely ask you ah how far with the car from boo is everything okay and you must not be offended or you must answer them and tell them we're well, actually boo and i have fight and boo have called moto back simple as that because you are the one that brought them into your business in the first place so it's usually safer when you keep your personal life it's hard you know out of social especially social media oh social media is such a rush you know but we enjoy the attention initially and when everything is good it's when the the reverse is the case that we now start. That's when we know that there are such things like as, as you know, social media trolls and bullies and all of them. They, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are always there. When they even when things, those people that are commenting on your page, like, oh, can you call, oh, congratulations, oh, can you call this and where things are going good. They are the trolls and the bullies, oh. They are there monitoring your page, like even monitoring spirit, waiting for the juicy news. So when it now happened that can you call, like Bagja was arrested for not paying, the balance of the car he bought on credit the girl will just carry it for you they will now go back because it's like when you put up the good pictures they save it too they will scream and save it they, it's very evil and demonic people they can keep that picture for years so when that year one now guys they would have dig it up from their archive and now put it place 
you know, side by side. Before, after, with the bay or without bay. So please keep your business out of social media. You will live longer. Ah, uh, it wasn't a movie. It was. It was two things. It was an, uh, a commercial. You know, um, it was a, the MTN commercial I did that brought out the face. Nobody knew the name then. Then Domino, which was a TV series, brought out the name and the face. So it was actually Domino that actually made Femi Branch. Let me just put it that way. There has been considerable growth, no doubt about it. And even as much as I um, lay quite a, a chunk of blame at the door of people that have been at the helm of affairs over the years in Nollywood, we must also give credit to their resilience, you know, for sticking it out that long, you know. You can be doing rubbish for a long time and everything, and if you really want to improve, you can change along the line and at least you to a point that some people who no better will come and take it to the next level. So um, that's much I commend them for, you know. So um, Nollywood has really changed. It has really changed. The quality of production has changed and keeps changing. The quality of our stories, the quality of actors has changed, you know. Even um, technical people, you know, the quality has changed. You see a lot of young, vibrant, intelligent young people now you know, who are fantastic either as cameramen, lighting men, you know, post-production people as well, and fantastic young people. So the bar is being raised every day. So it's either you're ready to rise or just like pack your load and go and be selling Zobo. So we're moving and by God's grace, we'll keep moving till we get there. I cannot even Feel, in fact, if I were to write either an autobiography or a biography on that, I would probably take several volumes because I keep learning every day. You know, when you are an actor, you are on a constant, intrusive journey into the lives of everyone you come across. Right now, even you as the interviewer right now, okay, as an actor, my brain is automatically recording everything you're doing right now. I don't have to look at you. My, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a preset. And it's being stored there. And any time I'm now asked to play this role or being an interviewer, my brain will now search its database for anywhere I've ever seen any interview. All the people that have interviewed me, their body language, the way they like you, the way you just, hmm, and all that, you understand? So I retrieve and now choose the one that most um, uh, uh, suits most the particular role I want to play at that time. And I do it. You might watch me play that role later and now see yourself in some of my mannerisms and all of that but that's an actor you know so I learn every day because I apply myself to my environment I apply myself to my surroundings I take sound bites off everywhere I find myself I always soak in the ambience of whatever I am and it helps me as an actor to better equip myself for the roles I find myself playing so I have learned that um, nothing is permanent I have learned that um, uh, life is transient. Change is the most constant thing in life. Um, I have learned that the only way you can stay relevant is by keeping it fresh, is by taking it like it's your first time, not getting too comfortable with where you are, always aspiring to be better than yourself, is by being your own best competition. That's the, that's, that's the only way to keep rising, being your own best competition, your own best and worst critic. That's it. So those are things I have learned that, you know, you do not stand somewhere and desire change or desire success or elevation. You have to keep moving, you know, keep aspiring, keep working, you know, don't just be a dreamer, you know.
do something with that dream, work, push it, work, work your visions, work your dreams. Those are some of the things I've learned in this journey. Yes and no. I say yes and no because oftentimes you do not even know when the movies come out. So uh, most times I just get calls from people, ah, I'm watching your movie right now. And I can where? Like, ah, I don't know, I'm, I'm watching it online. And I'm like, hey, what film is that? You know, I mentioned one title. Eh. And I'm inside the film. He said, yes, now. What do you call the title again? Well, eh. What role did I play? Uh, where well, you played the pastor that went to rape somebody. Like that. I know it's the pastor that went to rape somebody that you people will remember to call me for. Don't worry. So that's when you now remember, oh, okay, that film. Uh, so it's out, you know. So most times you don't even know when the movies come out. So it's hard to follow about the ones that you do of course you'd want to see yourself uh at least that that's the best way to evaluate yourself and you know prepare yourself for the next job you know that's it okay let me say this actors don't pick rules rules pick actors you can quote that Femi brand said that that's original copyright 2017. actors don't pick rules rules pick Actors or picks actors. Now I say that because you know we say that one time when they interview us, so how do you choose your script? How do you, you know, pick your roles and everything? And then they now tell you, yeah, you know, I, I select my scripts. I take time to select the scripts that come to me. And maybe like in the old years, one script that came to Bros or Madam, you know, but it's all part of the package. We understand. <laughs> but really, oh God, I'm so gonna get hit for this. But is it true? Now, no, it's not true. But here's the thing. This is what I'm trying to say. The actor, I mean, the rules pick the actor in the sense that oftentimes, like I'm a writer, I write. When I'm writing um, a script, for instance, I write with people in mind. If I'm writing um, a comic role, I have people who I have natural preference for when it comes to comic roles. So I might probably have like two, three people in mind, but as, as, as I develop the character, I just end up with like one person or maybe two, just in case that one person is not available, you know? And that's from the perspective of a writer. Even sometimes when a writer doesn't really have a say in, you know, the casting of the movie and everything, the director or the producer immediately after reading the script, in fact, as they are reading the script, they are already having people come into their heads. So, and everybody have their preferences. So, it is those people that, ah, okay, I see so-and-so person in, in this role. I'm, eh, are you sure the person can carry on? Oh, okay, fine. So, it's decided there. Okay, we're going to call Ramsey Noah, or we're going to call um, uh, Genevieve, or we're going to call um, uh, whoever. You understand? So, they call you. Yes, there are times that you might need to like tweak one or two things and tell, okay, I'm not really okay with this. Can we work on it? Can we change this and everything? When you get to a certain level in, in this business, you have that, you have that leverage. It's a, it, you know, it's not, you, you actually have a say. And you can actually say, look, I don't like this. You know, let's do it like this or let's try it like this. Sometimes when you get on set and you're like, okay, fine. Can I just try it like this or can we just try it like that? You know, so that's, um, that it's not, now that's not saying that as an actor you cannot read. Of course, you can reject the script if you do not like it or you feel it is poorly put together. You know, those are the reasons that I have had in the past to actually reject scripts. Although at the end of the day, because I'm a writer, because I do not want to demoralize anybody, so when a script comes like and I see it, it's not really okay, so I make suggestions. Okay, if you really want me to play this, you need to look at all of this. You know, and I've had to I actually help somebody rewrite an entire script once for free because after i did i went through and i just did a critique the guy was like totally just destroyed and i felt no this is not good and i told him that look don't worry i'll rework it for you you know he said ah bros i don't have money and don't worry i will you understand and i did that for him and it turned out to be something good so there are, there are times you have, have to rework a script or suggest um some tweaks here and there you know so largely rules pick the actor it's hardly the other way around i'm not saying it doesn't happen that way but it's hardly the other way around that's that's the way it is how do you define controversy really if you're not flowing with the tide 
if you're not moving in the same direction everybody's moving yeah you might be termed as being controversial you know um it's very funny because the media mostly they build the controversies they create the controversies in some cases and then after doing that they now term you or brand you as being controversial now they make you now them do a more so they now brand you as being controversial because if if it's controversial from the way i understand it it's it's derived from the word controversy you know and what is a controversy you understand something that is in dispute something that is either this or this you understand it's you, for you to see somebody is, is, is controversial, that means he's always involved in, in controversies, you know. And by that definition alone, I would not say that I am controversial, you know. There's a, I would believe that there's a difference between bad press and being controversial. I might have had some bad press in recent times or in the past or whatever, but that will not uh, translate to me accepting that I'm controversial. I'm not, though. I'm just, I just say the truth when I need to say the truth or when I feel that it is necessary and oftentimes i just keep quiet i don't talk so if my saying the truth or saying it as it is makes you see me as being controversial then more i seem to your cake so that's the way it is well like i just said you know it's the media mostly that creates these things although sometimes the celebrities themselves put themselves out there i i heard some time back that there's some celebrities that actually pay media people to actually write bad stuff about them just they just want people to start be talking about them maybe they feel they've not been in the news for a long time and they just want to people to just talk about them again so they don't care whether it's bad or it's good just let them just say something i find that really ridiculous i don't even want to believe it's true they mention the names of some people i don't want to believe it's true because that's like the stupidest thing anybody can ever do you know you cannot always be in the news that's one thing you need to understand you cannot it is not even buari who is president of nigeria is not always in the news do you understand he's not always in the news when i say he's not always in the news it's not the fact if you if you if you listen to the news every day you might hear buari maybe mentions once or whatever do you understand but you are not the president of Nigeria, you are not the governor of Lagos State. You are not the chairman of IFAQ, you are a local government. You are, fine, you are a celeb and everything. But why must you be in the news every day? It doesn't even make any kind of sense. You know, because the moment you start desiring that, that's when it's... Because news is news, and there's no such thing as bad news. So when they don't have good things to say, they must look for something to say. So they will also say, you know, that shirt that he wore to that event was the one he wore when so so and so did her marriage in whatever and i think it's the same one you wore in like four or five movies they must look for something to see so we put ourselves out there also regarding that you know so um then the press the press will always be the press they have to sell their whatever get traffic on their blog i'm talking somebody saying <laughs> I deserve my comments. I'm not saying that to say what you're doing is right. I'm just saying they have to. So don't put yourself in a position where you will be the material. That's what I'm trying to say because they must get material. <laughs> I rest my comments. <laughs> People are just allowing me to be saying some things today. Okay, I'll make this one mild. I'll make this one mild. Um, if you truly have an inclination because a thespian is a mirror to society um where we're satirists we mirror the ills of the society as it is and we prefer solution and say this is how it is but this is how it should be we're supposed to be the good guys we're supposed to be the voice of the people we're supposed to be the ones voicing I mean, the, the concerns of the voiceless, you know, people, the reason people will see us on the streets and rush to us, oh, we want to take a selfie, I love you, I love your work and everything, is because they feel that somehow, they feel some empathy, they feel that, okay, this guy is connected to us. Now, it makes it all the more sensitive when you now, in that capacity, now decide to go into politics. Politics, as is seen in this part of the world, is not service. If you're talking about other parts of the world, politics is serving, you're serving the people. But in this country, we all know politics is not serving. You're not serving anybody but yourself. That's the truth. And everybody knows it. And there are no expectations. That's how bad it is in this part of the world. There are no expectations. Zero, as in, the only expectation is that you, 
your family members when they tell you as you they go oh boy hmm. use your brain oh this one we want tasso now use your this is not our last opportunity for this family oh just try your mother will go and collect bc from wherever just for you to enter your uncle who has not spoken to you in years but here you want to contest for local government yeah man that's and i'm there my boy i know you will get there uh, actually i have some 10 million that i have lying around that i can give people will gather this money do you think they're stupid and will you enter they want the man that gave 10 million is not trying to come back and collect 10 million no? so you will give him that stupid 25 million naira contract to go and fix one road he will collect his 10 million first from that 25 million naira collect another 5 million for his personal whatever set two boys then the 5 million naira is what he will use to do the 25 million naira job and you cannot talk because you know what's up so if you as a friend of society now decide to enter that terrain then you must really have your head screwed on tight you must really know what you're about because another thing because it's not easy saying you no know, me i'm going to be different i'm going to change things i'm going to you can see from what is happening in Buhari's case when you are there and you are surrounded by them because you will always be surrounded by people with person you understand you, it's not you, you cannot operate as an island then you have what we call the bureaucratic jungle people in the system those are the real criminals in nigeria in case people don't know they think it's the politicians yes the politicians are fine but the real criminals the real bad are those civil servants and not be joke, I know they play for you. Like, I enter your office here, I need something tomorrow, I'm going to tell you, I don't get that, don't worry. I will go on social media and I will call your name and I will. But those civil servants, hey, those ones that have been there, they are the system. When you hear the word bureaucracy, that's the problem we have in this country. Bureaucracy. bureaucracy. That's the problem. The system. This is how we've always done it. This is how it happens here. No man can just come. They, are, they will frustrate him out of there. I'm telling you, an office messenger can frustrate a DG of an agency. An office messenger. By the time we tell you, say, say, say the fire don't loss. Would it look for now? Not be fire lost the other time for National Assembly and the fire. Do you know how long you delayed? And they are trying to shade where they are trying to like. So anybody can mess anybody up. So back to the question. There's nothing wrong in wanting to serve, in wanting to go there and everything, but are you really? Are you sure you're really going there to serve? I'm not calling anybody's name now. But really, are you sure you're going there to serve? Because the people who are going to get you there have expectations. The people who surround you have expectations. Do you understand? And those are your primary concerns. Not the people that you are going to serve or that you're supposed to be serving. You must be settling, not that you set, you must be settling those ones on a regular. So that's why they don't have time for the masses. Because they have their godfathers and their whatever to settle. You know, so I would advise that look, it's not a place for an artist. That's just the truth. It's not a place for an actor. In that sense. Not that some people have not gone there, like, okay, fine. Unfortunately, I can't mention any instance in this country. That's that's why it's sad. I hate to say uh, actually in America, one actor did I hate to this is Nigeria we're talking about. How many people have gone in and served? If we open their records really now, I will see that they actually serve people, they actually did that. How many? I'm not saying they are known, I'm just asking this question, how many? So if you know an answer, you can tell me. You understand? But I feel that if you want to serve people, there are other ways you can do that without going into politics. Politics is dirty. Forget it. Don't try to convince me. We all know. There are other ways you can serve people in your communities. I personally have chosen to go that route. I had the opportunity to run for the chairman of my local government some years back and everything. In fact, my dad and I had teeth over that when I said, you know. But I, I believe there are other ways that you can serve the people. And I'm doing that in my own community in Ijebu land. That's why I also have what I call the Ijebu Pride Network. You see, start from where you are. Start from your own immediate environment. Change is not, okay, I want to change Nigeria, I want to change Kuda. Start from your own backyard. Do you understand? So that those you use that to build your antecedents. So that if for any reason you now want to come out, one you would have gained experience, then it will be easy for people to wonder, okay, this guy has some knowledge of what he's talking about. Do you understand? But don't aim at changing a million lives. Start with one life. That money you want to go and blow on that campaign and all that, whatever, 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 whatever. Pick, don't even start a foundation because that one too, then it just take and chop money these days. Just randomly pick people. It can be in your village, it can be in your streets. There's need all around us. 
and to change Nigeria. If, if every Nigerian has that mindset, we don't go send government to. Just pick a fees and Fausa that are always on your street, rolling tie up and down, and that the, the parents can't afford to take them. Just pick just one or two of them alone and let them be your legacy for life. Build those two lives and see what those two lives can tra will translate into, into into the future. So I'm not really for it to life for real. I don't. I'm not saying anybody shouldn't do it and everything, but I beg you, I'm not top as that one. Mm. To put myself out there, I'm out there. I don't need to put myself out there. By God's grace, I'm out there already. So, <laughs> so unless I don't understand your question, you understand. If you say to keep yourself out there, okay, that's 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 different. Because, like I said earlier, it's not just about being there; it's about staying there. You know, maintaining that. Yeah. So, um, I think what you meant was to keep yourself there. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've I've already explained that in my other responses earlier. That you know, you just need to have that mindset that look. Don't get to a point where you become too comfortable where, where you are always aspire. There's always something better. There's always somewhere higher to, uh, to, to, to go. You know, the sky is nobody's limit, you know. So there's always somewhere higher to go. So once you keep thinking like that and you keep working in line with that thoughts, then people will always want to see you. You always have someone somewhere who wants to see Femi Branch, who can't enjoy a movie without seeing Femi Branch in it. Or, you know, so, you, so once you have that mindset, but once you get to a point where you think that, yeah, this is it, you know, you say, ah, no, I was always having a branch. Every time we see him, he's always playing landlord, 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 doctor, doctor, doctor. And it's always the one beer, beer that he carries from the beginning of the distance to everybody. He, he walks the same way, he talks the same way, he's always looking the same way. He's, I'm not mentioning anybody's name. Anyway, so that's the answer. <clears throat> so as for what keeps me going, it's, it's simply God. It's not very fashionable to say that these days. It's not very fashionable to say, oh, it's God that is sustaining me, or oh, thank, thank God for Jesus, or oh, thank, thank God for Allah, or whatever. It's not very fashionable to say. You don't sound cool when you say that. That's, that's the mindset. That's what people have made people to believe. And this industry that we're in is not faith friendly. It's not, it's not religion friendly. <laughs> Classic example, Sunday morning I'm here shooting. When I was called for this photo shoot, uh, and I was like 10 30 on a Sunday morning. Like, I wasn't supposed to go to church. And they're like, ah, now you know, now that's the only time we have it. They now turn into emotional blackmail. They're not like, okay, fine. Maybe I can just dash into church, then come, or maybe when we finish on time. But at the end of the day, you don't end up going. You know, so we don't observe holidays. That's this business that we're in. There are no holidays, there's no Christmas, there's no New Year, there's no salad, there's nothing. There's no weekend. There's no resumption time, there's no closing time. Even for those of us that have offices and try to run, it doesn't work. You know, we don't have holidays. No vacations, nothing. We're just on a constant roll, you know. And you tend to get to a point where you just forget about God. And it just comes, maybe just, if, in fact, most of the time, the only time, I just find that like two, three months I haven't been to church, and maybe it's just when we have a scene to shoot, shoot in a church and we're not get to, I'm like, Jesus, I haven't been to church in like two. You understand? It's really terrible. But we need to consciously apply ourselves to building a connection with God. Because a lot of us have faced some serious disasters in this business. And it's because we've been exposed spiritually. We do not have a spiritual blaze or a spiritual connection, so to speak. So we need to always be mindful of that connection it's very very necessary now it's not just about you attending church every sunday or every tuesday or whatever i'm talking about personally i do not have much faith in the church i'm sorry as in because of what it has become both but i have faith in god and i strive to build that connection severally i go to church when i'm chanced because of this work but i always keep that connection active in whatever way I can, you know. So, please, you will never have time to go to church. You will never have time to pray as a Muslim or to go to the mosque. You will never have time. But there is always time to talk to God. There is always time to pray personally. There's always time. 
even if you're on set and you're going through your lines you already got your lines and even if it's like just a minute or something you can do that you know you do not know how many lives that has saved so please actors thespians we don't see this as a profession not like god but let us not uh, encourage it further in our lives eh? <laughs> so that we do not die young mm. people know what i'm saying you know thinks about it pills For having done the best I could, for always bringing my best to anything I do, I want to be remembered for impacting lives. It doesn't have to be a hundred people, it doesn't have to be a thousand. If it is one person that can stand up at my funeral or at my remembrance or at my wake or whatever and say that, if not for Femi Branch, I will not be where I am today. That, for me, is okay. And I'm hoping, because this is going on tape, I'm, I know by the grace of God, they won't have any reason to play this thing back anytime soon, probably in the next 40, 50 years. Mm. Because when he died, they will, not play, they will not pick this thing that I just said, they will not play it back, and hey, and he said it to... That is not my portion in Jesus' name, and it won't be yours too. <laughs> but that's it, really. The best investment you can have in life is, is to invest in a life. That is the best investment. It's not to buy a house on Marana Island or to like buy a million dollars in stocks and bonds or to buy bitcoins or whatever. The greatest and the most profitable investment in life is to invest in a life. Because when you invest in a life, you are investing in lives. Because that same life is still going to impact other lives. So that is the best investment you can. So for all investors out there, for all business people, for people that are not even business and everything, Invest in a life today. Just one. Just one. The dividends are mind-blowing. I'm telling you. And they, out, they outlive you. That house in Marana Island can burn down today. The government can reclaim the Obana Island today and nothing will happen. Water can overrun it today and all your money is gone. That 120 million naira rose phantom can just crash today. When it was his own, when the thing crashed, what happened? It's gone. 120 million gone just like that but it is not possible to invest a fraction of that amount in somebody's life and it will just go it is not possible as long as that person is still breathing your investment is still living and it will keep yielding dividends the word is enough for the wise it's a many so like seriously i'm even you are the first person that would ask me about that. You know, it's 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 really becoming a menace. As in, really becoming a menace. You know, people will just you know flood your DM with all sorts of funny requests. In fact, I I'm, I'm presently dealing with one or I won't believe I've already dealt with it. You know, and it, because these days it's even hard to tell who's telling the truth and who's lying because that's that's really the problem. This girl sent me a message and she's like, uh, her father. I should please help her father. He's, uh, he's, he's blind, but what they actually need is not even for the blindness. Is money to pay. The, 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 her father is a barber. They live somewhere in Aja, and he needs 40,000 naira to pay his shop rent. Okay, not a bad request, Abi. So, out of curiosity, I don't usually open such, such messages, but this one, I just, I, was, I just got curious. I was like, okay. So, I opened the message. And I went to her page and I saw a slay mama. No, like seriously, as in she was slaying up and down. And, uh, Sheraton today, this one tomorrow, and everything. And, she, ah, and I was now like, okay, so this is the person asking for 40,000 naira for her father's barber shop. I was like, no, no, like seriously. So I just like, X, this girl now started hounding me. I do not know how she got my number. I have no idea. She now started sending me text messages. She now started, it was really crazy. I blocked her on WhatsApp. As in, I, I'm still looking for how to block her. If anybody knows how, please DM me. How to block her on my normal line. As in, she sent me messages every, as in almost every hour. It's crazy, you know? And I'm like, seriously you know because they, they, these are the kind of people that now make it hard for you to know when 
somebody's request is genuine and who to help or who not to help. So it's it's crazy. And one thing you people need to understand again is that look, celebrities also have their own problems. Though. That's one thing you, you, you forget all these razzmatazz, all these forget it. You understand? They also have their own problems. So the fact that you ask for something and the person cannot do it, it doesn't mean the person is wicked or the person is insensitive or the person doesn't want to help. The person might just not be able to do at that point in time. So please, what I take easy. There's nothing wrong in asking for help, but once you have asked and the person does not respond, just let it go. Don't hound the person. It's not going to yield anything positive. Me, I'm, me, I'm even nice. I know some of my friends that will call and will swear, swear for the person's generation and everything. How can somebody be calling you at around 1, 1 15, 1 a.m. in the middle of the night asking for how? Who does that? So it's, it's, it's really crazy, you know? But at this time, you can easily block people on Instagram and connect on this and this and button your phone. It's not so easy. Oh. Now, you can. Okay, thank God I found a solution. Somebody will help me to, you understand? Because it's really a stage where I'm considering jazz. I'm not joking. Okay, be laughing. I will tell Ronnie. Like that, you you call me and say, "Hey, I'm the one that I'm going to go back to the coach and the lacquer chair." But you, you ballet, you ballet, you ballet, you ballet. You won't let me finish before you drop the call. Ronnie, you well. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I actually wanted to be a soldier. Yeah. What, what was that expression for when I said I wanted to be? As in, what's that? And everybody was just like, hmm? yeah. As in, play a hobby. What else? Excuse, excuse you, plays, plays. No, really, because I attended. Uh, uh, I was attending military school. I, I didn't get admitted. That's Air Force military school. Just so I went to Air Force secondary school in Nigeria. So I'd always been like fascinated by anything in uniform and all of that, you know. And it's made me to join quite a lot of uniform organizations in the past. So probably. Not because some people are thinking it, probably, but um, I, I probably would have given my music more attention if I, if the acting thing hadn't, mm, you know, because I, I, I um, I'm a songwriter, I'm a singer, and I also write. I mean, I also, um, okay, I'm confused. Yeah, also write. So I'm a playwright, poet. So I probably would have given my other talents more attention if I was not, you know, if the acting thing hadn't like taken. It's a very selfish profession. It takes everything from you, everything. If you're not careful, you have no life outside of it. So that's probably what would have happened. Eh, branch okay, bye bye. So I'm not busy. Ah. You try well, well. Yeah, what's up guys? My name is Femi Branch, as you all know, and I'm asking you to keep it locked down to Broadway TV. It's all about entertainment, news, and everything that has to do with fashion, whatever it is. It's on Broadway TV, and you always get the facts here. You know, you always get the fact. We always drop it like it's hot here. So you understand. So keep it on locked on, locked on. I said, keep it locked on to Broadway TV, man. Don't change that dial. If you change it, we will change you. Peace. <laughs>